recounting adventure in Trinidad and Tobago, an ABC culture book written by Nikisha Watson, illustrated by Cien Fernandez Bihari. Zero. Joe was so excited to fly from England to Trinidad. He really missed his Trini cousins. It made him feel sad. He had zero patience. This means he had none. He could not wait to arrive and have lots of fun. One. As soon as they landed, Mommy followed her nose. She was off to find her favorite food, Patrick supposed. The vendor stood behind a cart with a sign painted in blue. It said, Hot Doubles. Mommy beamed as she ordered a few. She scooped the creamy chana and bara with her hands. Daddy knew she was happy to be in her homeland. He thought it looked delicious and asked Mommy to share some. She had a bag full of them but only gave him one. Two. Two hummingbirds were in Grandma's garden sipping nectar. Patrick thought their bright colors were spectacular. Native Trinidadians are called Amerindians, Patrick heard. They first named this land Ear, meaning land of the hummingbird. So many trees to climb. Joe and Claire picked fruits from each, mangoes or pomeracs, whatever they could reach. Granny cut them up added seasonings, and called it chow. Ian ate it all and said, It's so yummy, Granny! Wow! Mmm, yummy! 3. While driving to Mayaro, a huge flag was in sight. Joe counted three colors, red, black, and white. Red represents the friendliness of the people and energy of the sun. It's warm and bright all year round, so easy to have fun. Black is the color of strength, unity, and wealth of the land. These isles are so much more than just sun, sea, and sand. The white stripes are for the sea by which these lands bound. It's Joe's favorite part, so many beaches all around. 4. They spent the weekend at Mummy's favorite beach. Daddy helped Joe pick four coconuts. They were hard to reach. Mayaro Bay stretches for nine miles along the east coast. The best place for a line, Mommy would often boast. Patrick helped pull in the fishing nets. What a treat! For dinner, Grandad brought a huge carite. The boy spent the day playing cricket on the sand. Claire dug for Chip Chip and held them in her hand. 5. In Port of Spain, their first stop was Emperor Valley Zoo. There were lots of local animals, some from far away too. Joe's favorite was the ocelot. He counted five in the cage. Mommy said naughty people hunt them. This filled him with rage. It's a wild cat with spots and dark yellow fur. Joe said they are so beautiful, Patrick replied. Yes, sir. The zookeeper let Claire pet one. Mommy was surprised it was so mild. Trinidad is the only Caribbean island where they live in the wild. 6. The Royal Botanic Garden is great for picnics, they were told. It's one of the oldest botanic gardens in the whole wide world. Mommy showed the children a special flower. Six grew in a bunch. What a stunning setting for them to have their lunch. The tree was full of bright red flowers. How they loved it so. The chaconia is the national flower of Trinidad and Tobago. 7. Around the Queen's Park savanna, the magnificent seven you will see. These are seven stunning mansions built in the 18th century. Named Ambard's House, Stolomir's Castle, and Millie Fleur's. But that's not all. Queen's Royal College, the Archbishop's House, Hayes Court, and Whitehall, built with a tropical twist to a French, British, and Spanish style. They show how the history of these islands is so versatile. 8. 
The boys went hiking with Uncle and stayed overnight. Their destination was Paria Falls, a remarkable sight. They trekked through the North Coast forest to get there. Patrick saw eight types of butterflies. They were everywhere. They also saw breathtaking formations like Turtle Rock. Joe pointed to the trees at toucans in a flock. With his snorkel, Joe saw lots of fish in a school. While Patrick jumped into the clear blue water of the plunge pool. Nine, in the trees eating fruit was a family of nine cockerico, one of two national birds, and it's found in Tobago. When in Store Bay, if you wish, try curried crab and dumpling, a popular dish. Joe's plate. Had lots of dumplings and he ate them all.、Mm, he had a big appetite for someone so small. Mummy had hers with provisions and cuckoo. She sat on the shore enjoying Chenay's too. <laughs> Ten, in Pigeon Point's crystal water, they went for a swim. Patrick raced Joe to the jetty to see who would win. With their snorkels, they spotted so many sea creatures. Joe counted ten kinds, each with interesting features: angelfish, stingrays, and corals, to name a few. Parrotfish, lobsters, turtle, and reef sharks too. Mommy lay on the golden sand, and Daddy built castles with Claire. They wished they could stay in Trinbago all year. Eleven. They went to the Chabago Heritage Festival, and did you know this event celebrates the cultural traditions of Chabago? They enjoyed song, dance, folklore tales, and mouth-watering cuisine. Claire cheered when eleven bell dancers arrived on the scene. Well-trained goats entered the Buku Goat Race. When Joe's favorite won, there was glee on his face. This is an exciting pastime on the island. Jockeys run with goats held by a rope in their hand. Twelve, at Grand Riviere, Joe got the best surprise. Baby leatherback turtles creeped out the sand at sunrise. He counted ten and then two more. Twelve baby turtles heading for the shore. Their mummy came back to this beach where she was born. By the time she got there, she was tired and worn. She dug a big hole for her eggs to be laid to keep them safe from a deadly raid. Two months later, when the eggs hatch, the babies dig their way out, and for the sea they dash. Thirteen. They rode along the Caroni Swamp in a boat. Patrick texted his friend to gloat. Around a corner was the most amazing sight: tons of the national bird, scarlet ibis, in flight. Joe counted thirteen flying above his head. So many nested in the green trees, turning them red. The swamp is an important wildlife sanctuary. Where various animals live in the river and mangrove trees. Fourteen, in Port of Spain, there was a carnival parade. Fourteen Mako Jumbi walked on stilts to masquerade. Mako means healer and Jumbi means ghost. Born from West African traditions and perfected here, so Trinis boast. Patrick marvelled at how high in the air they could stand. There is such unique talent in this beautiful land. Joe could not believe how they danced on sticks. He asked Uncle Junie to teach him these awesome tricks. Fifteen. Kitty's Carnival Day came as a treat. The children went dancing in the street. They loved their costumes, especially the headpiece. Fifteen feathers decorated each. They chipped to the rhythm of Pan, Soca, and Calypso, while Mommy joined some ladies doing the limbo. Carnival is one of the island's most famous celebrations. 
It is a display of the splendid culture of this nation. 16. Grandad took Patrick to a pan yard that night. The atmosphere in the crowd was such a delight. 16 men played a steel plan worn around their neck. Are they tenor pants? Patrick wanted to check. A steel orchestra practiced. The players beat the pan with such drama. They were getting ready for the competition called Panorama. Patrick smiled as he knew the song they were playing. He danced with Grandad and joined in the singing. Seventeen. The big stage was set for the Dimash Grass Show. Someone's going to be crowned the new monarch of Calypso. Seventeen Calypsoans compete for the crown. Their lyrics tell stories of tropical events through song. Mommy cheered her favorite, clapping bravo in Trinidad. They do this yelling, Kaiso Kaiso. Calypso is a type of folk song born right here. It's a gift to the world, Patrick said. That was clear. 18. For a peaceful day, they went to Lopinot. The museum gives all the Coco Estates history you need to know. It was named after a lieutenant in the French army. The King of England gave him the land in the 19th century. Joe joined some kids flying their kites. With his, there were 18 taking flight. At the picturesque village, there was so much to do. Bathe in the river, learn to make chocolate, and tour a cave too. 19. Nolly's Tunnel is a preserved historical site. 19 fruit bats were inside. They like the lack of light. It was used long ago when there was a railway, the largest in the Caribbean. Joe heard someone say, The surrounding area is so lush and green, they picnicked on top of the tunnel. It was relaxing and serene. They drove through the mahogany field in a brasso. Such a stunning village. It's the best way to go. 20. Trinidad and Tobago is one of the most beautiful places on earth. Mommy was so proud of the place of her birth. Infectious culture, delicious food, and stunning scenery. A range of flora, fauna, and wildlife amongst the greenery. Joe drew a picture to thank Granny for their stay. They were 20 hearts to show how he loved every day. The children hoped to be back soon to their favorite nation. They simply had the best vacation. Count with me to 20. Sadly, it's time to go. Oh, how they will miss this country so. Joe hummed a tune he'd learned during their stay. It had been stuck in his head all day. He told Patrick and Claire to join in as he counted. One, two, three. They all sang out loud, sweet, sweet TNT. The end. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please subscribe and come back again.